Yeah. Oh shit. Oops. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to another investing episode. I'm the Dividend Bloodhound and this is Mrs. Dividend Bloodhound apparently, uh, as I've referred to her in the lovely little the lovely little poll that I recently said that you guys would like to see a home buying journey or not. The resounding answer from that seemed to be a yes with an 89% approval ratio. So from now on, we will be sharing our journey from the very start of our property moving journey, right the way through to moving in and setting up and getting comfortable in our new home. However, first up, we have the actual purchase of the property in the first place. And I feel like I should actually introduce Mrs. Dividend Bloodhound. This is the lovely Meg, my lifelong partner. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I'm actually sweating. <laughs> <laughs> this is our first ever live stream together. So be patient with us. Uh, and it's Meg's first ever live stream or first ever appearance in a YouTube video. So do be patient, we are trying our best, and thanks for tuning in. So, without further ado, I'm going to hand over, and Meg's going to start, the, looking very scared there, Meg's going to start the journey in what we have done so far. So. Okay, well, firstly, I think um, we were actually looking for the location of our first property. Also, we have GNT. Yeah, it's been a very <laughs> stressful evening, well, a few days. And that's kind of what we wanted to share with you guys and why we've recorded it now because we thought it was important to actually catch our feelings about the process. Um, it's, not, it's not easy and we've learned it kind of the hard way. Yeah, um, it's not fun at all. And we've only just started, so this is good. Um, but so, but we, had to, we had to go to decide the location, so we were looking on, on the map and I'm commuting into... London, so we're trying to make it work, and Josh is your Portsmouth way, so we kind of had to look at the commutes for both of us and see where's where's uh, feasible. Um, and we've changed locations multiple times, um, but we so initially we were looking in kind of Farnborough and Camberley area, and we had a few um, viewings around there. Um, I think I viewed about ten places in one no in one day. You managed to ignore I had an, I had an extreme uh, spreadsheet that I filled out and took to yeah, <laughs> I took to all my viewings. <laughs> and the estate agents were very very scared. <laughs> yeah, impressive. But, um, and then we decided that that location wasn't great for us, so we looked in Bracknell instead, didn't we? And yeah. That seemed to fit our criteria and um, Warfield in particular. It's a really lovely location, it kind of surprised me a lot. Um, but again, we looked around and our process initially was just to shortlist through kind of property websites and our um, priorities were kind of parking and a garden. garden yeah. um, Two bedrooms, minimum. Had to be close to the station. Commutable. Yeah, so. A lot of the usual checklists really I would say for a lot of people but it's yeah. important we've got two cars so we need to be able to fit them in. Yeah absolutely so we shortlisted it down and we had another look and it's not I mean you can look at a house online um, and you get there and you just don't almost immediately if you if you want to live there or not there's some places that we we turned up to and we just hated and we just didn't we just didn't stay for very long um and then there's other places that we really did like and and had a little look around um even though i think one place that we really liked it was too noisy and it was almost perfect it was right next to the road and it was just right next to the road but it was a really 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 nice house really beautiful house the right sort of proportions but as soon as you open the front door into the uh, back door even into the garden you're just greeted with the noise of a road and every 10 it's seconds or so which is yeah which was a real real shame for that property and then other properties that were kind of bigger weren't in such a kind of nice location um well josh he is going on deployment next year as he's told you i think 
You've told no. them that you're in the no, Navy? No, I hadn't. You've not told them you're told, in the no. Navy? They know, they know I'm in the Navy, they know I'm in the military, but he I hadn't the told them that I'm going away next year. He no. has a tendency to tell people that he's in the Navy, so it's a running joke. I'm sorry, but they had it's to fine. know. It's fine, it's <laughs> fine. Thanks. But, so he's going away for a while next year, so I'm... I need to feel safe, it's, it's a really big thing, top priority. 100%. Um, so, but they, they were bigger locate, they were bigger um, houses, but they just weren't quite right. Um, and then last week we found a really ideal property. We did, yeah. Really nice cul-de-sac, really not noisy, um, felt really safe, felt really warm. We were doing all the really, checks, you're really quite, good estate, you do yeah. all the good checks that I don't think about doing. Yeah, I do the, prop, I don't know, the, the slightly more experienced property buyer maybe, looking in the cupboard, looking at the boilers, looking at the plumbing, guttering, roofing, chimney stacks, all that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <Are> trading with <laughs> CJ. Maybe, it is certainly possible I might just hand it over and you'll have to deal with this one for the time being and then I'll wrestle control back whenever I get a break off the deployment or when I come back. But yeah, we have an avid, really. I think they would like me. Competent. I have a custodian of, <laughs> of the. You have a very good uh, custodian of the channel here in waiting. I think. Um, You're cute. So yeah. Anyway, we digress a little bit. I think. So that was. Were you talking about the winner there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, quickly just before that, we did have a short list of four properties that we thought were ideal for us, but when we viewed them for a second time or looked into them properly more and more we decided that we eliminated them based on one thing or another whether that be the noise from the road the location not quite being right the house being too small or too near a station i mean we were on about the commute to london which is very important for this one um, and there was one that was right next to the station that we would want to be using or that she would want to be using. However, the garden almost backed onto the train line, which was obviously a, well, for us, it was a, an elimination, but for some people, maybe not, but for us, it definitely was. So ultimately we settled on one winner, which is where uh, Meg will pick up the story. So we decided to make an offer now we'd already been previously told by the estate agents that there were two offers already on the table by previous viewers and i think they i don't think they can make that stuff up but i i'm not 100 percent sure because i think my i think my mom initially thought that oh that they that they could have just said right or not yeah well i think what was supposed to happen is we thought um we thought that with the market the way it is due to the, well, the, the stock market crash that definitely did happen, people thought that the housing market would definitely crash as well. And we found personally that in at least in the Bracknell and Warfield area, that isn't the case at all. And especially with the stamp duty holiday that's now been implemented by the Chancellor of the Exchequer and the government, it's just that the market hasn't really dropped at all. And the property that we were viewing that we expected we might be able to put in a, like a bit of a bargain offer against already had offers, as Meg mentioned, yeah. that, were, that, were, that were already above where we initially thought that we would start at. So if Always we'd have, good to test. Yeah, Always if, we'd, test. if we'd have gone with the silly offer, which I would 100%, having bought a property before, I would 100% recommend make the silly offer because you never quite know when somebody's going to say yes i got an inordinate amount of money knocked off a property because i made a silly offer and then the vendor came back to me with a counter offer that was far closer to my silly offer than the actual asking price of the property it's always worth thinking about going in with the crazy offer however in this case it um, it was already well below what had the two offers that were already on the table, so we had to come up a little bit from there. So the following morning we came up, didn't we? We came up the following morning, and they seemed a bit happier with the offer. And we're quite we're quite fortunate at the moment because we're in rented, so we don't have a chain, so our position is advantageous. Um, so usually we look we would look quite nice to vendors wanting to move quite quickly. Um, so that put us in a good position and then us upping, upping our offer in kind of the rounds of what the other people 
kind of we thought kind of said we, well we um, beat them didn't we we were, we were told roughly approximately what the what, where we needed to be and where we needed to sink an offer to stand a chance so we after some deliberation mm. we did exactly that so then about a few hours later um i got a call saying that our offer had been accepted so we were very very happy and we had a very good weekend celebrating um and then i i was at work yesterday and i i got a call to say that actually there's been somebody who's viewed the property and didn't make an offer and guess what they offered more than us <laughs> they came in and thought yeah they've got they thought they've got the deeper pockets and came in and tried the uh i don't know if you want to say it or gazumped yeah we it's, well it's the new word <laughs> we've potentially been gazumped on this property we don't know yet because ultimately we're in the better position to move the other people are offering more however we believe not that we can guarantee it we believe that they're in a chain so their position is worse than us the agent came back to us and we don't know whether it's the agent asking for more money or whether it's the vendor asking for more money but they came back with a essentially asking us for more money and uh Meg here basically turned around and told them to uh, where to go in uh, the politest possible terms, shall we say. Uh, so that has now gone back to the agent. Well, it's with the agent and it's with the vendor. And we're waiting again now to see. Well, that's the thing. So they'd already... Hi, Mum. They'd already... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so they'd already um, viewed the property but they hadn't made an offer. So yes, so yes, um, usually um, the estate agent wouldn't let anybody view the property. And or so, make an offer without and, viewing. Or make an offer without viewing, but because they had seen it and they just hadn't made an offer and they kind of missed, missed their window, um, they were allowed to make that offer and by law they have to pass, the estate agents have to pass um, that offer onto the vendor knowing that they've seen the property already. And so we're just kind of in limbo at the moment. Um, and we're hoping, we, so we were told yesterday and then the estate agent called me again last night about half eight and I wasn't expecting their call. And yeah. he just said that he's doing everything he can. Um, can and then he he's asked me if I could go on any, our side. He could go any more. I think his words were, I'm on your side because you know, my money, my money rides on this too. <laughs> Yeah. I think with the words, not wrong, right? Not, not wrong. wrong. I think we we were his, we're his commission basically. Whereas whoever signed the other couple up might not be him, so he doesn't get. He might not win out on this one. Maybe I'm not quite sure how a state agent's commission works, but he seemed to be more in our court and more on our side because we can move quicker than the other side of things. But we also realise that full asking price for a property at the moment is full asking price. Uh, and some people are, can be quite uh, greedy with money because money is money at the end of the day. And yeah. But we think we're in a better chain from what the estate agent told me last night. Um, and like I said before, that always, that always plays well. If you, don't have, if you don't have to sell a property, then that always bodes well. And because we're going from rented, that's that's always advantageous. Um, but so we just we just wanted to show you that actually it's not all what you see on TV. And we love we love all of the property. We, we love homes under the hammer. Place in the sun. Um, we watch a lot of that, but and you don't see all of this stress. They cut the stress no. basically, is what I would say. They cut the the i don't know i don't want to say heartache because heartache might be a little bit too far but they cut all of that stuff out of it and it's something worth bearing in mind when you do want to move or buy a house that it is there is a process involved as well it doesn't just appear one day and that's you with a house there's a, a quite extensive process involved maybe up to 90 i hope that's one place no not quite it's hendrix mute oh. <laughs> I hope that's not like sacrilege or anything like that. I hope that's a good one that you approve of as well. Um, 
my preference, so you can't be blamed. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm exempt, so I just bought what I uh, almost what I was told. <laughs> but we we just wanted to stress because I've not I've not bought a place. I mean, you've got a couple, but I'm so new, so so new to this process that when the estate agent said you've got you your offers accepted. What what questions do you have? I just I don't have any. I I had no idea. I had no idea what to even. I kind of almost wanted to say, what's next? What the hell am I doing? But, well, yeah. At least but, you didn't say that. But then at the same time, I don't think it would have been too bad if you did. But they, I don't know if they had a forewarned against this, the whole mm. gazumping thing. But it's it, it's quite a quite a terrible thing, really. It's it's but it's part it is part of the property market. It is something that can and does happen all the time, especially in popular areas, definitely. And especially the wealthier areas that you go to as well, especially the likes of London or commuter belt to London or really nice places. And we just happen to be amongst that. Um, absolutely, mom. What the gazumping happened in the 80s. Um, right, that's put me off a little bit. Um, yeah, if that did, if that did happen, then then, then yeah, it, I mean it's still a thing I've heard of in the London property scene, and now it's it's spreading elsewhere, and people with deeper pockets are people with deeper pockets, un unfortunately, as rubbish as that is, should I say? I think what's important to say is that actually gazumping can happen <laughs> all the way up to the yes, exchange. Yes, absolutely. What's he said? He said more stressful than buying shares. Actually, I didn't find buying shares too stressful. <laughs> no, you just copied me. You just watched me lose all my money on the stocks in the middle of the crash and then guess who bought in when Boeing hit its bottom and I was down the maximum amount of money. I'm smart. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose. Well, not been down, not been in red at all. No, you don't even know what red is. What red? The red colour is. I do. I'm still red for now. Negative. Negative red, whatever. You don't know what that is. As far as you're concerned, stonks only go up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so gazumping can happen all the way up to you exchange. So even if we get a call tonight and they say. You've, you've still got it, they still want to go with you, then we're still not out of the woods and it's still it's still a, pro, a process that we've got to go down knowing that that could happen still at any moment. Hopefully not because they shouldn't really accept any offer. There should be nobody else viewing. left to view it really. As far as we're concerned, I think four parties viewed it or five parties including ourselves viewed it and all of them have now, including this couple or team or whatever you want to call them, uh, have now all put an offer in and supposed to be best and final offers as well, even though somebody was a cash buyer amongst that as well. Um, so they were probably the quickest mover. They re the vendor rejected that based on the fact that it was too low. But being a cash offer, they were probably saying, well, we're cash, we can move quicker than absolutely anybody. Is it not worth the, I don't know how much the reduction was, the 10, 15, 20,000 reduction or whatever it was. And ultimately, the vendor decided against that, that it wasn't worth that. However, our, our strategy and our plan is that we're, we're offering the second best offer, but we have the best, we, we, we're offering the most money and in the second best position, basically. So second most amount of money and second quickest to move. Hopefully that puts us in the, in the best position. And then after that, pending nobody else coming back with a stupid offer, the agents have said that they're not interested in doing bidding wars and it is their policy not to do bidding wars. But estate agents are estate agents. Sometimes we can't, you can't really tell and judge that. So we just have to carry mm. on. But we just thought that we would forewarn about gazumping. Gazumping is a thing and yeah, yeah. I think it caught... Caught us both out, to be fair. I knew that it was a thing. Um, I was naive. I sheltered you from it a little bit because I was hoping that it would just not be a thing um, and turned out that it now is. But ultimately, we might win it, so we'll see. And we're waiting on, uh, we're waiting on the result now. There's, if the phone goes at the moment, uh, it would very possibly be the estate agent. If that happened, we'd gladly share... The very big smiles or the 
cry. sad faces a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but at the moment we've not had to fork out for any money. We haven't we haven't paid any solicitors. They've not paid the broker. Um, I actually had a meeting with the broker scheduled for Thursday, so that's when we were going to sort out the mortgage. I already had an agreement in principle, which nowadays to view a property in the first place you have to have an agreement in principle. Um, they don't want to just, because of all of um, the situation that's happening at the moment, people don't want to have um, viewers in their property that aren't actually serious about buying a house. So that's why you have to have the agreement in principle. Um, but And then I was also speaking to some solicitors and getting quotes, it's always good to have a little shop around and find different quotes. They can vary so, so much. Um, and don't always go for the cheapest either because they're not necessarily the best and the best option. And also don't go for the most expensive because the same thing. Sometimes you get what you pay for, but at the same time, don't get ripped off. Just go with your gut and- Easy, you easily can, said. You can usually gauge, I think. Um, so that's where we were at. Um, we've not lost any money just yet, other than our uh, in time, I guess, of going. Yeah, other than, um, but that's, that could ultimately all come through in the end as mm -hmm. well. We just have to be patient, and <laughs> patience isn't in our, our best side of things, really. Uh, I think I'm slightly more patient than you, um, but even my patience is being tried by this at the moment because it's a bit of a mess and it's just annoying and we want to we want to get we don't know mum it feels weird just like a semi video chatting my mum from youtube we've not, we've not um, spoke to we don't they haven't spoken <laughs> to us today um we thought that they might actually speak to us we're, this, this morning <laughs> <laughs> we're potentially biggest fan <laughs> expecting absolutely we're potentially expecting the agent to get back to us today, but that is by no means guaranteed. And then at that point, we might know, um, or equally, we might not. You would hope having, we dug our heels in yesterday and went enough's enough, we're not increasing our offer. The offer remains on the table, take it or leave it. Um, so the vendors got to choose basically between a higher offer, but a slower rate of moving and a slower chain and the chain could go on especially if that person's waiting for somebody to move into their house and then they're waiting for somebody to move into their house and so on the chain could get five ten people long before before you know it whereas we it's just us they're ready to move out at their end into rented accommodation if they need to or willing to move back into with their parents apparently and we're in rented accommodation where we can move with a month's notice essentially but we've got a couple of months usually it takes to buy a house we do know that much <laughs> but we've secured a rolling contract with our current landlord and that's always quite nice because it gives us the flexibility and the pressure is off as well i know that before we had done that i felt so much pressure on trying to find a house i was and i'm starting my new job in august as well so it just it just put a lot of pressure on us i think and getting that getting that rolling contract in place really, really helped. Um, so if you are in that situation, I de definitely recommend speaking to your landlord because it does, that flexibility just, just I think, um, yeah. gives, you, gives you time to have a look, look around and not rush into anything. It's so. also good for the landlord as well because they don't have to pay for the, uh, for the renewal of the contract if they can go on to a rolling it gives less stability to the landlord because essentially he's always, or she, should I say, are always 28 or potentially 30 days away from having to put their pro their property back on the market again. Whereas a six month or a 12 month contract does give some protection against that. But most of the time, often, if you submit your notice to a landlord to get out of a property and give 30 days notice, which is reasonable, um, the landlord isn't going to stop you from leaving because it's just too much hassle, especially if someone's leaving for financial reasons. You never really know. Yeah, so we just wanted to show, share our journey. I know it's a bit, um, I guess, off topic, a little bit off topic. Yeah, it's still part of the about. financial community. We've still had some, we've still had 
plenty of people tune in to watch, I think. I think they're happy. We've had no bad comments. Don't so, bad comments. <laughs> no dislikes, I don't think. I don't know. I can't see. I can only see the four likes on the uh, feed. The six likes, wow. <laughs> Look Aww, at that. You mentioned nice. likes and you get two more. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, no dislikes, I don't think, at the moment. Seven, thank you very much. Whoever you guys are, if you want to make yourselves known in the chat, that's absolutely great. We can thank you personally. Eight likes now. Uh, I guess you guys just forgot, huh? <laughs> it's definitely because of my presence. Can't remember me rolling, to, rolling the intro. No, not for this one. Didn't have the dividend blood hand. Yes, mom. Thank you very much. It's all thanks to you. Um, Thank you, Uber Eats Spike Delivery UK Uber. Brilliant. Thank you for the thank you for the <laughs> wonderful. That's okay, no problem at all. I mean, I don't mean to ask. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to say thank you for tuning Stop in. Begging anyway. for I'm not likes. begging, I'm not begging. <laughs> um, there's no intro to roll because it's a live stream and we're not I'm not doing that at the moment. <laughs> um, the intro will be back shortly and I can really roll the intro and can call you dividend chasers again and all that. Funny, Back in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Hashtag banter. I'm sorry. Hey, Jay Mac, you're right, pal. Great to see you. Couple banter, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> apparently. Um, we're having an absolute, despite the problems with the gazumping and potentially being beaten and all that, we are actually having. A pretty good time going through this journey together. Uh, it's enjoyable, maybe not the word until we actually get in there, but uh, yeah, an experience nonetheless and something worth doing together, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, my words failed me to be fair. I've got, <laughs> I've got nothing. It's off the cuff, got, I... no, got no retakes. <laughs> <laughs> I think what you're trying to say is that it's fun going around. I really enjoyed seeing people's houses. I'm quite nosy like that. You really enjoyed having the the checklist and the spreadsheet and I'm, scaring estate agents. I'm very organised as a person. I think you have to be organised. We, I, I organise everything. I introduce lists into Josh's life. I might like, just like to say that I got by just fine beforehand. But yes, the lists did appear. But anyway, we think that, we, well, we hope that you enjoy the video and that um, you do, we would want to share our journey with us. Um, we'll try and document it as much as we can um, from start to finish, I guess. And, and even maybe some of the renovations, if you guys would be interested in that, because we're bound to have some, a few things that we'd want to do with it. Uh, we'll definitely keep you updated. I don't know how often these updates will come. It might just depend on when news happens or ultimately when we feel like it, as well as getting in with the rest of my uh, YouTube schedule that we've got going on and fitting around the busy lives that we both have. Um, Meg's a scientist, been very busy with the uh, health crisis right now. Uh, so ultimately... A very busy person you guys probably have all known me and know what, what my lifestyle is in the military that's also very busy and can change at the drop of a hat and as already mentioned i'm potentially going away for a long time next year which is obviously something to consider when we're when we're buying this place together so maybe i will have to take over the channel brush upon some of my knowledge yeah <laughs> or i can just talk you around the house and show and show you our tortoise. <laughs> yes, actually, we forgot to mention Maxi Moo the tortoise. She does have a dividend. Uh, di oh, God. <laughs> you have issues. You're obsessed oh, with dividends. Please, oh, please. She does have her own Instagram. I, I mean, she does have her own Instagram page at. Uh, Come on, you run Maxi the page. Moo, Max, <laughs> Maxi Moo the tortoise. I don't run my own Instagram uh, page. Well, no, I do, but you I do. Don't. I don't really take care of it yeah. too much, Jen. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Mum. <laughs> Yeah, at Maximu the Tortoise is the Instagram page. At Dividend Bloodhound Investing is my Instagram page. Oh, oh that's excellent, that's really mate. good. Yeah, um, we'll bear that in mind for sure, definitely. And if we don't use you for this house, uh, we've got plans on property investing in the future and buy to let investing in the future as well. So that skill set will be particularly 
really useful to us. So we'll definitely bear that in mind and we'll take some contact details off you, mate. That's really useful. Thanks for that. Um, well, we might as well get over the half an hour mark, eh? <laughs> We're like 20 okay. seconds away from half an hour. So I feel like that we should just carry on for a little bit and then we'll wrap up after that. But thank you very much for tuning in, guys. We'll bring you on our journey as best we can, as and when we can, and when we feel like it, as long as it fits in. Um, and that's basically all I've got. Yeah, and thank you for being so kind on my first video. <laughs> They don't bite, honest. Nervous. They don't bite. They're I felt lovely. like I was in an They're interview. They're lovely people. They don't bite. Hey, they've got me to monetization and we've got the subscribers and the view time that we needed. They're all lovely people, the mm. YouTube community. Go get another. I think we definitely should go get I think another. We, I think we should do a cheers. Oh, okay, let's do a cheers. You guys are a great looking couple. <laughs> That's a very nice compliment. Thank you very much. Oh, oh you're in Scotland. Uh, well, we can. We could maybe work something out, I would say. We'll definitely see. But we'll have your contact details anyway, for sure. And uh, we'll work something out. Absolutely. That, I think that wraps us up for we'll this video. Catch, what do you usually say? We'll catch you next time. Catch one. you in my very next episode. Oh, uh, I'll wrap things up there, etc., etc. See you in the real take, world. Take, 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 take. Uh, see you all later, basically. Catch Dividend you later. Dividend chasers. Bye-bye. Juices, nice. See you later, Jay Max. See you later, everybody. Cheers, everybody. I'm not Have entirely a good sure how to turn this thing on. I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> it's your thing. Uh, bye. bye, everybody. See you later.